Good morning to everybody. Welcome and thanks to be here. Uh, I'm very glad to introduce this uh, conference and I will uh, speak about it uh, um, briefly, very briefly. As many of uh, the presents know, mm, this uh, event is part of a Nova Migra project. The Nova Migra project is uh, an Horizon 2020 project uh, devoted to investigate European norms and values faced to migration and refugee crisis. It is a multidisciplinary project coordinated by Andreas Niederberger of the University of Duisburg Essen and carried out by eight research groups from a European University and one from the United States. This conference marks the conclusion of the Nova Migra First Task, uh, coordinated by Professor Duell, Marcus Duell from Utrecht University. This first task was a theoretical one and dedicated to a reconstruction of and to an analysis of European values in, uh, and it should offer a frame for the uh, empirical part of the research, uh, namely task two and three, and for the last final task, a normative task on cosmopolitanism. In this first part of the research, the Utrecht team elaborated a conceptual map of normative concepts specifying a value-related grammar that can be applied to European human rights system. On the background of this conceptual map, our unit of UNIMI traced the philosophical and legal analysis of the values rights embodied in the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights. You can, uh, a synthesis of this work carried out by Paola Parolari, Nicola Riva, and uh, me, is in a report to the European Commission. And you can find the printed reformulation of this report in the bag you received at the entrance, uh, and is this small book. And, uh, in, but in the next day, you can have an open access version on the website of, of the publisher, Giappicelli. Paolo Nicola, I don't see Paola, Paola, <laughs> okay. <laughs> together with Daniela Tagliaferro, which is a member of the staff of the Department of Social and Political Sciences, worked a lot for the organization of this conference. So I wish to thank them very much for this work. The organization of a public event, closing the first part of the research Nova Migra, was among the commitments of our unit of the University of Milan. Simply discussing the title of the charter, namely Dignity, Freedoms, Equality, Solidarity, Justice, seemed an appropriate way to do it. So we asked six international well-known scholars who have already worked on these topics to present their own view on how each value should be understood and could be better implemented in contemporary Europe if possible, but not necessarily, uh, considering migration issues. So we are very pleased and honored for their acceptance. Each main lecture should last approximately 14, 50 minutes, and will be followed by an intervention lasting 10, 50 minutes by discussant, with the idea to propose a short comment on the lecture and indicate some possible starting point for the debate. This also considering the multidisciplinary composition of the public and of the panel actor. The final round table that should take place tomorrow in early afternoon with all the keynote speaker and the discussant that can stay with us should offer a short uh, a moment, not, not short, but a moment, for continuing the debate, confronting different visions 
and the possible relation and conflicts. The third day, Wednesday, is scheduled a workshop on gender equality in research and policies. Nova Migra project, in all its different tasks, must pay specific attention to gender perspective and gender equality on the assumption that most analysis and proposal can hardly be gender neutral. The workshop was initially conceived as a moment of dialogue between members of the Nova Migra research groups, I mean the gender workshop. But we thought that a lecture by Professor Mickey Verlo, an international renewal expert on gender equality policy making in Europe, could offer inspiring arguments, being the perfect star for the workshop. This workshop will be opened by Luisa Leonini, a professor of sociology in our department and director of the uh, UMIMI Center Genders, which stays for Genders and Equality in Research and Sciences, and concluded by Professor Bianca Beccalli, a, a professor of sociology, uh, whose research and activities in, on gender issues have played a fundamental role in our university and far beyond. In conclusion, I want to say that we are very satisfied with the final program and very grateful to all the speakers and discussants for accepting to participate to this conference. I warmly thank all of them and also the colleagues and friends who accepted to chair the different sessions, as well as the member of the Nova Migra Advisory Board who <coughs> will arrive in this conference. The present order of the lecture is uh, mainly due to organizational reasons. But unfortunately, we have a last minute change because uh, Professor Ward, Bronzeward, uh, not, did not arrive because his flight <laughs> has been canceled. So uh, he's, he apologized, he sent us his paper. But we decided to um, split the session on dignity at the second um, last this morning and to begin with justice. I'm very glad and very, uh, I, I don't know how to say it, <laughs> and, and I thanks a lot Professor uh, Marcus Duell because he was uh, um, He's the discussant of uh, um, Brown's work paper on dignity, and he accepts to summarize also Mark, um, Brown's work paper and then to make his discussion. So uh, I really thank all of them. But um, now, uh, before be beginning the first session on justice at this point, uh, I, we will have a short moment of opening greeting by Professor Antonella Baldi, who is the Prorector for Internationalization of the University of the Studi di Milano, by Professor Antonio Chiesi, the Director of the uh, Department of uh, Social and Political Sciences, and by Professor Andreas Niederberger, who is the coordinator of the Nova Migra project. Uh, I really thank all of them. To, for being here to welcome our guests, and uh, I give the floor to Professor Bat. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Alessandra. It is a pleasure for me to be here and welcome you, uh, in the, uh, especially on behalf of the University of Milan. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, the, the international workshop, I, I conference uh, from Nova Migra on European values in the Charter of Fundamental Rights is a fantastic occasion, not only for, uh, for you and uh, for the pro progressive debate on these topics, but also from our, our university. Well, uh, I think that uh, in the next three days, uh, uh, you will, uh, I will thank very much uh, all of you for debating around these topical themes. And I would say that we recognize that universities have a responsibility in these terms, have a responsibility in inclusiveness, and has a responsibility in promoting education of 
responsible citizens. And just a few words about our university. Of course, our university, as you probably know, is a large uh, multidisciplinary uh, university. We have uh, uh, more than 60,000 students enrolled, and 4,000 of these students are international students. Uh, where they come from? They come from Africa, they come from Asia, they come from South America. Of course, not only from these countries, but from, we have a, a lot of students from these areas. And uh, for this reason, we have developed a number of programs and initiatives to allow the inclusion of these students and to promote also that more students from these countries enroll in our university. Just to make an example, we are an active office for the recognition of diploma. We have a special program of fellowships and free enrollment, 150 in total. Uh, we have recently developed a new programs to promote and to help Syrian students to be enrolled. And this is not an easy task, as you can imagine. But at the same time, we have also developed, uh, uh, with the city of Milan and Lombardy region, some initiatives to facilitate also the housing devoted for international students. And also, we have developed a special programs for visiting professors coming from the fragile areas. Uh, and I would like also to, uh, to tell you that there is a very important initiative from this point of view that is called Scholars at Risk. I think that many of you know that Scholars at Risk is an international worldwide network that assists and supports scholars coming from, of course, risky countries. And we are happy to say that the Italian, the Italian section uh, of Scholar at Risk, we take part to that and we have a recent meeting here. And we dedicate uh, as well some initiatives of visiting professor to this aim. So I don't want to tell too much about that. Of course, uh, what is important in any case is not the specific initiatives that each university and each country has developed, but also it's important developing networking. And this is why I'm so happy to be here today and we stay a little while to hear your discussion, but because we really think that we have to work together and I would say just two words before concluding that we have developing in these recent years at European level different initiatives to try to integrate and to overcome divergences which still persist at European level among countries on these topics. And you know better than me what I mean. And therefore, uh, we take part, of course, to different alliances. One of these is LIRU, that is uh, uh, the League of European Research Universities, but more recently have been launched other two initiatives I want to communicate to you. One of these that is the U7, uh, alliances that is launched in July in Paris and want to discuss about this topic and to enlarge the perspective including not only European University but worldwide university on these uh, specifically um, topics of what is the role of university towards citizens, towards, of course, uh, uh, all the world, to support a new idea of education, a new idea of integration, and a free circulation of students and scholars among universities. This is so important for us. And in this summit, we discuss that, as well as the a recently la uh, launched program of European Erasmus Plus on European University Alliances that is launching uh, in these years, in the next three years, uh, Europe will put uh, these programs, finance these programs, and these, the with the objective of creating a new education area where there is a real discussion on inclusiveness and integration. Uh, I just finished here because I don't want to take time, of course, but I want to communicate that we acknowledge to these programs, Nova Migra, a very pivotal 
uh, activity, a very pivotal role in overcoming these differences. Because despite the many progress that we recognize, there is still a lot of things to do, a lot of things to debate, and a lot of values and norms to putting together in act in order to overcome these big problems of integration, migration, and human rights. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just, uh, just a, a few words uh, to greet you uh, to Milan, to this uh, very important and interest conference. Three days of, uh, of uh, conference uh, on a subject which is uh, absolutely important, uh, is uh, uh, of increasing importance. Uh, uh, you values. Uh, have been declared, have been defined. Um, they contribute to the collective identities of uh, what has been uh, called and contested as uh, European society. Um, as a sociologist, uh, I'm uh, very, very interested uh, on uh, one uh, on the evolution of values uh, and on the relation between uh, uh, what has been uh, called uh, from Weber uh, on uh, the instrumental uh, rationality and the axiomatic rationality. So values have to do with uh, axiomatic rationality, but we know that uh, values can be contested uh, because of instrumental rationality. And this is what happens uh, nowadays, especially in Europe, especially in Italy, uh, in regards with uh, the migration. So that's why this uh, conference is so interesting, so important. Um, but I don't want to enter the argument, of course, because this will be discussed and developed uh, uh, better by the uh, scholars that have been uh, 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 invited and uh, who have accepted to give their contribution to the conference. I, so I just uh, thank you uh, 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 for, for this conference. Uh, thank you to the organizers, for, first of all. Thank you to the contributors, which uh, will uh, enrich the quality uh, of, the, uh, of the material that will be discussed. And thank you to the public, of course, who is interested to these kind of, uh, of matters. Yes, <clears throat> maybe kind of my words will be somehow the kind of the transition from the introduction, <laughs> uh, the opening remarks to the contents uh, of this conference. But first of all, let me also all very warmly welcome you here. And let me thank now in the name of the Nova Migra Consortium, uh, Alessandra Facchi, Nicola Riva, and Paola Parolari for organizing and putting together for us this great conference, which is very important uh, in the research uh, project in Nova Migra. Um, Yes, maybe kind of also to explain to kind of our keynote speakers and to the audience who is not familiar with the Nova Migra project, a little kind of the function of this conference in the project and the questions that very likely will come from uh, kind of partners of the consortium during this conference. I mean, obviously, this will be an, a very interesting conference in itself. So you don't have to have the Nova Migra background in order to appreciate uh, the presentations uh, and, the, and the comments. Uh, but kind of in the project, uh, kind of this conference has a pivotal role of somehow kind of transitioning from kind of the philosophical foundations to the empirical research, but also kind of, again, kind of feeding into the broader philosophical perspective at the end. So at the background of this project is a question the European Commission asked uh, in its call for papers, which was if the refugee crisis in 2015 or around 2015 affected European values, and if so, 
kind of what this meant kind of for European values being kind of valid at the moment and for a cosmopolitan future of the European Union. Yeah, I was very amazed since I'm a kind of cosmopolitanism researcher. Uh, I thought kind of that's an important question. So the idea somehow conveyed by this call uh, for proposals was to say that so far European values were kind of suggesting some cosmopolitan future and cosmopolitan perspective of the European Union that the refugee crisis somehow affected, undermined this cosmopolitan trajectory such that now kind of the future of the EU was open again as to which kind of values would be kind of, kind of valid in place in the future. So when we were developing the project, uh, we obviously kind of discussed how to approach such a question and which kind, of, which kind of research to do more particularly on it. And now kind of obviously, as Alessandra Faki pointed out, this is related to the first research kind of work package, as it is called in the European language here, uh, which is the foundation of things. So we thought, first of all, it's important to somewhat clarify what we are talking about when we talk about European values before looking at any particular topic, but to just make clear what is being meant. And here already is something that was at least irritating for some of the philosophers, some lawyers might not have been surprised, was that the call specifically conceived of the European values as the values that are enshrined in European legal documents, like the Charter of Fundamental Rights and the Lisbon Treaty. Yeah? So there is a legal kind of, um, kind of deposition of certain values, and these were the values the Commission was primarily looking at. And the list of values that will be discussed during this conference are the values we are considering in the project because these are the values in the legal uh, documents. So the idea of this first work package in our project is somehow to see kind of what do these values mean. And this is a major question kind of the organizers here ask to the, the keynote speakers. How can they be interpreted? Do they have a coherent meaning uh, in the legal uh, documents? And somehow kind of the now kind of for us the way to go to the next two kind of work areas with more empirical research was also the question kind of how important are they in the European project? Where are they realized? Are they realized at all or are they just in the documents uh, where they can be found? I mean some of you might know that these values have been legally operationalized in the democracy control mechanisms, uh, so in the procedures that are going on kind of with regard to Hungary and Poland, but nothing is really coming out of it. So this is kind of the legal operationalization of these values, uh, which in itself would be an interesting topic to discuss. We won't have it here. So kind of the work package one, which is somehow concluding its work at this conference, is somehow to see, so what is the value basis one could somehow assume the European Union rests on and how deeply is it implemented. Because then in the two kind of empirical research um, areas we have in our project, we are looking on the one hand on the policy level. So what is going on in European migration policy and which are the values informing European migration policy. On the other hand, we are looking at what we call, with a lot of discussions, value agents and kind of value kind of transmission practices. So we are looking at administrations, NGOs, basically kind of more or less official and co kind of, kind of co coordinated bodies dealing with refugees and which are the value and migrants and which are the values that come into play on this interactional level um, kind of in migration and uh, integration questions. And here we have two questions, and I think some of these questions will also come uh, kind of to the speakers uh, today, namely one, what is the role of the presumable values at the foundation of the European Union in these contexts? Yeah, are these values important reference points in European migration policy, or are other values, security, kind of protection of Europe, more important uh, values, for instance, here, or one of the working hypotheses uh, we kind of projected in, the, in our proposal, kind of maybe NGOs are driven more by religious values uh, than kind of these more secular values. Yeah? So kind of here the question is, if we now look at migration policy and real migration administration, integration, interaction, 
what are the values that are really at play there. And this brings us then at the end of our project uh, to the question of the future of Europe and its possible cosmopolitanism. Because one of the issues is, will these and should these, the values we will be discussing here mostly, will and should they be kind of the values of future European project uh, should be based on, relate to, or can we discover in migration policy, in migration interaction context, other values that might be of importance and interests. Um, we had a kind of the, our previous conference was in Poznan in Poland, where we kind of kind of discussed a lot the values, for instance, of hospitality, conviviality, kind of more neighborhood kind of cooperation. So values on maybe a much lower key than the values we will be discussing here, which seem to be quite important in kind of local integration concepts uh, or so. Yeah? So here, kind of the, the question again, going to the keynote speakers here will be, what is the future of the values you are talking about? Will these and should these be the values informing the future of the European Union? Or are these maybe kind of too broad too far away, too imprecise values to be important for a future of Europe with the challenges that are ahead. Yeah, so I hope our keynote speakers and also the rest of the audience will kind of understand a little more some of the questions we might be asking, which are not only kind of targeted at understanding what the values are about, what they could be about, but also kind of how have they been affected over the last uh, decade uh, or so, and what will be their future role. Yeah, I hope we will all have an interesting conference, and thank you all for being here again.